YouTube. It's me again, Chief Wander. And we were talking about my list. I know I've gone over it again, over and over and over, but the list started off with six things that I wanted to talk about. The first video had the first three things in it. Then we had the second video was number four. Uh, the third video was number five. And number six has a, take, is going to have a two-part video. <coughs> and that one is the future camper design. Now, the reason why it's a two-part is because I took you around the camper and I showed you what it is now, the way it is now. Um, I didn't show you all of the lighting and stuff like that or the, the vent, the fantastic vent. I talk about it all the time. Uh, but if I would have tried to show you the vent, you would have got a face full of light and you wouldn't have seen anything. And, uh, and if I turned the lights off, you wouldn't see anything anyway because the sun will be coming through the vent, right? The sunlight. So, you didn't see that part. But everything else you did. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take all this stuff out. I'm going to set up my 10-man tent. Uh, one side, it's a two-room tent. One side will have all of my belongings. The other side will have me. <laughs> and uh, in the process, uh, I'll empty the trailer out first because I'm going to need the trailer to go ahead and get the supplies that I need to build it up. Now, the reason why it's going to wait until we get to North Carolina to do this is because of my physical limitations. Um, my grandma, yeah, my grandmother, my kid's grandmother, uh, my mom and my Aunt Da are going to do the build out for me on the inside. I'm going to help the best that I can, but, uh, you know. I'm, I would imagine Denny will help out if he can, Jim will help out if he can, uh, Jim's got his own physical limitations, so, you know, we got to, we're all going to do the best that we can with it, uh, but everything's going to get yanked out of here, uh, we're going to do one inch, one inch insulation panels, <coughs> uh, inside of all of the ribs, wherever you see white, that's going to be insulated, wherever you see black, that's a rib, and the, the ribs are one inch. Uh, so the panels will go up and smoothen out the wall. You see what I'm saying? Then we're going to take uh, one by threes or one by fours. Uh, it, one by twos would work, one by threes more than likely. Uh, and do cross ribbing this way. Uh, and then go ahead and put more insulated panels in between there. Then we're going to take uh, 16th inch. Uh, it's like it looks like plywood. It looks exactly like plywood, but it, it's uh, I don't know what it's called. It's, it's inexpensive. It looks like uh, white pine. It is white pine, uh, which I really like a lot. Uh, we're going to do the exterior of the interior of the walls. Uh, the wall, the wall itself. That's what it's going to be. And I'm going to stain that. Uh, I want to use a clear stain. I want to bring out the knotty pine. That's what. That's why I like it so much. I love the knotty pine. And I'm going to do everything with it. Uh, the, the ceiling, the walls. Uh, I want to put, if I have the money, which I'm hoping I do, I want to put a layer of insulation on the floor. And then I want to put the same pine panels on the floor, right? Uh, but I might change the stain a little bit to make things a different color. Like the ceiling will be lighter than the walls, the walls will be a little bit darker, the floor will be a lot darker. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I think I'll like that look a lot. Then uh, I'll be coming in with one by ones, I'm sorry, two by twos, and plywood, I'm going to make shelves. Okay. Uh, this shelf over here by the bed. Now the bed's going to go back in the same exact place as it is right now, uh, except for uh, the the surface of the bed itself. I'm going to cut it about three inches from the wall and put hinges on it. 
so that way I can lift it up and access the stuff underneath it. Uh, all the way around, I'm going to close off the bed. Uh, in the center of the bed, I'm going to put a divider wall. And, uh, and that will also help support my big butt. Uh, this way, everything that's underneath the bed will not slide out from underneath the bed during travel, number one. And it would be a lot easier access for me. Because right now I have a hard enough time getting under to the stuff underneath the bed because of the, the limited amount of space that's in between the bed and the, the desk. Uh, it'll be even harder once I put the walls in because I will now I will be narrowing my living area, right? Because you're going to have uh, three quarter inches from the one the one by threes uh, that's going to be taking up space. You're going to have the extra quarter inch from the, the panel that we put up there, so you're going to lose an inch uh, of space on both walls. So that's two inches, and then two inches from front to back as well. Uh, actually, back might even be more. I'll explain that to you in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, then the, but everything will be smooth again. And the reason why I say that is because in the, uh, the south end, there's extra ribs that are sticking out. I hope that's what it is anyway. Uh, okay, so, yeah, uh, there's a one inch worth of space coming out from the wall right here. And, uh, and that's due to a, a support rib. So by the time we're done putting the walls in, uh, that'll be smooth. Man, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I have the shade that goes around <coughs> the, when, when you put these fans in, there's another piece that goes up in there and it um, creates the wall for the fan. I have that. Uh, so that'll look real good. Uh, the ceiling is going to have the same amount of insulation as everything else, uh, which is going to be two inches of panels, uh, individual panels. Uh, it's going to have the same design. It's going to have the first set of panels up there. It's going to have the ribs going that way from north to south. And uh, and then more insulation, and then put the, the, the interior wall up, uh, the the ceiling, <clears throat> and then make a T shirt. I don't I don't know anything about construction, by the way, about carpentry. Um, I'm a mechanic. I can do anything with com computers. I can do anything with cars, big rigs. It doesn't matter. Uh, but when it comes to working with wood, I have no clue. So they're going to have to teach me how to what we're going to do for the rounded sections, the front and the sides. Uh, the back's pretty much squared off. Now, these shelves, this one, once the bed is done, uh, then this shelf will go the, it'll touch the bed, all right? And, uh, and so it'll be a lot longer than the rest of this. Um, I will probably keep this section right here the same width as it is right now. Might even use the same piece of wood, I don't know. Um, these shelves that I have here and the shelves that I'm going to build in over here to this side will be built specifically spaced for individual things. Like I will have a microwave with me and that will be on this side over here closest to the door. Uh, my generator will run the microwave and uh, we'll be able to use that for heat and foods and stuff. Uh, and it's a small microwave. Um, I have a toaster oven that I might be bringing with me. Uh, it's something my mama gave me. Again, that will have to run off the generator. Uh, these drawers that I have, the drawer systems that I have, I'm getting rid of the framing, but I'm keeping the drawers. And I'm going to put those drawers on the shelves. And so I'm going to build them shelves equivalent to the drawers. That way I can, don't have to worry about stuff falling off the shelves. And there's going to be an overhead shelf right here uh, above the TV. And I'll be able to store small things up there too. And then the shelves over here will be mostly for things that... Uh, Uh, the shelf over here won't go all the way up to the roof because of my my clothing canopy 
uh, hammock. Like I said, I love this hammock, and it's going to go right back in again in the same exact spot because I like where it's at and everything. So this shelf will be dependent on the height. The height will be dependent on the hammock. Uh, now we can bring it in, put more legs up, and put smaller shelves up there in the back corner. That's awesome, but I want my hammock. And uh, so I'll have room to store stuff. That's the bottom line. I'll have room to store stuff. And uh, I have my Xbox. I have my. I have the uh, uh, Project Scorpio Edition uh, Xbox One X. I love that thing. Uh, I will not have the desktop computer with me anymore because I found that my laptop is going to do. It's going to be sufficient. I hope so. Well, I'm going to find that out, but I do believe it's going to be sufficient. Um, but everything will be pretty much mounted the same way, uh, except for the monitor uh, for the camera. Um, it'll probably be closer to my TV. And I'm going to probably put up a second TV on the door. That's if I keep the door. But uh, the second TV will be a much bigger TV, and uh, it'll be for the tribe watching the movie at the, you know, together as a tribe. <clears throat> and, uh, and not much bigger, like a 32 inch or something like that, uh, put up on that door. Uh, I'm thinking about putting a door inside the door. And this is what I was saying about that section over there. Um, if I'm going to put the TV up there, it'll be a flush mount, and uh, and I'm thinking about building an interior wall uh, at that door. I was actually thinking about eliminating that door altogether, but now I'm not sure. But I definitely want to do something different over there because the big problem that I'm having is rain. <clears throat> That's a big door. It goes the whole width and most of the height of the the camper. And uh, so when I open up that door to come in, it's exposing everything inside to the weather outside. And my electronics are over there. So I need to do something that's going to protect everything over there uh, by building a wall. And uh, and by, when I build that wall, I might put a screen door up. That way, uh, I don't have to let in all, I can leave that door open, get a nice breeze in here, and not have to worry about the flies and the mosquitoes and everything. So that's what I'm thinking about doing, just building a wall there, building a screen door there. That'll still be my exterior wall. And like I said, if I put a flush mount TV up against there, and I build the wall in enough to where it's not going to hit when I close the door, then, uh, then we should be good to go. Uh, but building that screen door is going to mean I have to leave that area over there open because I have to be able to latch the locks. So the screen door will have to open up, give me room to grab a hold of the handle and pull that door tight and then latch the locks on it and seal it. But yeah, that's that sounds like a game plan to me. Now, this section over here where the batteries are, uh, that's going to have a solid wall right there. And what I'm thinking about doing is building a box for the batteries, putting another floor vent in there, or the vent will be on the wall, one or the other, uh, the wall that I built for it. Uh, and then going ahead and putting the, the medic refrigerator over on that side at the foot of the bed. So the that section will actually be an extension of the bed and uh, and then the power inverters and the solar charge controller will either be built onto the wall in that area behind the refrigerator or, you know up high uh, the refrigerator will be like a coffin uh, uh, cooler a regular cooler so as long as I keep the, the uh, compressor fans uh, is where they can breathe, then I'll be good. I'll be good as gold. And I won't have to be sliding it around and damaging it, so I won't have to have wheels on anything. Uh, if we want to get something out of the refrigerator, then we can come inside, 
turn around, get the stuff out of the refrigerator, and then walk back outside again. And everybody but me should be able to come right in here without even hitting their head. Uh, depending on how much lower we put the ceiling. I'm the only one that's going to have to duck a lot, you know, but it's my home, you know, I'll, I'll be used to it. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what the interior design of this camper is going to be. Now the exterior, um, planning on putting a 200 watt panel going across the front. Uh, I'm also planning on getting me a 200 watt suitcase to be able to set outside, just in case I decide to park this in the shade or in an area that's going to be shaded part of the day. And I put the suitcase out where it's not going to be shaded because everybody will be, most people will be using this uh, for charging stuff. It, it all depends. And my end dot's going to have a way of keeping things together and stuff like that, keeping things charged. And I plan on surprising my mother, if she doesn't watch this video, with uh, battery and power inverter uh, and I can wire that to her vehicle we just have to buy a uh, uh, battery isolator an automatic battery isolator uh, I'll probably just get that from from uh, Amazon they're not very expensive the cable the, the, the wiring that I'm going to need is going to be a lot more expensive than that that would be the most expensive part depending on where we put the battery and the power inverter. Uh, but yeah, that way when they're driving, they could be charging the deep cycle battery and uh, and when they shut it off, it'll disconnect and it won't drain anything out of their battery. Uh, they can use that to uh, power 12 volt fans. Uh, they can use that to, to power a 120 fan, a 110 fan if they want. Uh, but also charge their phones, cameras, stuff like that. That'll be really good for them. And then in the future, if we can afford to get them a solar panel, then they'll be great. Uh, she did, I know my mom does not want a solar panel on the roof because she's got a fiberglass roof and she's afraid it's going to wind up causing stress uh, fractures and stress cracks. And that's a very good possibility. And she she's looking at keeping this van long term. So... Yeah, I understand completely, so if we can, we'll get her a suitcase. Or if I'm not using the suitcase on the trailer, then she could just use mine. So, everything is going to be good. It's going to be golden. Uh, that's the end of this one. That's it. My Aunt Dot's pretty much got her stuff covered. Uh, but I will, you know, we're all going to have to help each other do certain things. And, uh, and... That's what the tribe's all about, right? That's, we're a family. We're a real, true, blood-related family uh, that's going to be traveling together. So, you know, blood is always thicker than water. And in me, to me, uh, I'm not a... I don't really give a damn about money. I just have to have it to survive. Uh... I would love to get to the point where I don't have to have it to survive, but that'll never happen because I like to travel and I'm going to need gas. You know, stuff like that. But, uh, so and the reason why I bring that up is if the rest of the tribe needs some help, that's, we're good to go. You know, we will have an emergency fund put away that we'll all contribute to. But after that, after we contributed to that, and if anybody else needs any help, and I've got it, it's Thursday, I don't care. You know, it's, it, I'd rather that everybody was happy that's traveling with me than to have somebody traveling with me that's miserable. Yeah, and if I could have done something about it and I didn't, then I would be miserable. I'd be mad at myself. So, uh, and then there's no telling how many people will wind up being with us in the future. Uh, it, it might grow. Uh, it might not. Who knows? But that's it. That's the end of the list. Now it's all about the editing. <laughs> and getting it out to y'all.